Hi, welcome to the Fantastic Fishing Show. Today we're going to show you how to do a patch repair on an inflatable boat. This one had uh, a patch on there already which was leaking, so I've removed the patch and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it. It's a particularly difficult one to repair because it's a very large split and it's near a seam. So I'll just grab the camera here, my lovely wife. So you can see the split here, it's quite large, it's, it's larger than my finger. It's right next to this seam here, well it's the seam here, and it's difficult because you can see where the old patch was, it's going to overlap this seam and it's going to overlap this seam here. So air has the potential to leak out through the seams, it's very difficult to get the patch down smoothly. So we'll do, I'm going to put a slightly larger patch than was on there last time, trying to do a neater job than the previous person. And then if that doesn't work, we're going to try and use a liquid repair, which will work from the inside. So we're going to try and do like a double repair if the first repair doesn't work. So the things you're obviously going to need for a normal patch repair is a two-part glue uh, adhesive. There's two kinds of rib or sieve. There's ones that are made at Hackelen and there's the ones that are made at PVC. The best way to find out is, is contact the person you bought it from. If you bought it new, so go to your dealer and ask them is your rib or sieve made of PVC or is it Hackelen. Failing that, you could contact the person you're buying the adhesive from and, and they may know by brand. So if you had said my ribs are Susamar, they'd tell you that it's PVC, but if they told you it's one of the other brands, it might be different. But you need to do your own research on that to find out what they are. But you need a two part glue. Do not bother with a single part glue for repairing these kind of patches. Then you need a patch. They can be square or round, it doesn't really matter. Um, and what I'll do is, it'll be because it's PVC, they're, they're the same on both sides. But I'll sand one side just to take the sheen off to shine so that the adhesive can stick to the back of the thing. So you need a bit of fine sandpaper, pot to mix your glue in. And what I'll be doing, if the patch doesn't hold air like I needed to, I'll be using this liquid repair on the inside. But we'll try the patch first and, and hope it works. But if it fails, this thing called liquid repair, made by a company called Ribrite, uh, claims you can pour it into the tubes, move the rib, rib around so it covers the inside area, and then it will um, fill it in holes. So we'll try that if, if it all fails. So when mixing it, I, I could tell you what it does on here, but I'm not going to do that because they're all different. So just follow the instructions, um, but your glue says. So the first one to do is going to mix some of the of the glue. You don't pour the hardener into the glue because then all of your glue will go off. You want to mix it in a pot separately, so you're only going to mix up the amount you need. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply some to the back of the patch. this start to harden for a while because we want this to be tacky and then we're going to apply some to the boat. And you just need to put some air in there so you don't want this pumped up fully because um, the pressure will push the patch off but you need it pumped up enough so it takes the shape the boat will be when it's inflated because if the boat isn't at the shape when it's inflated it will stretch the patch so I'm just pumping it up enough so that I can get the shape of the front there to be what I need it to be. It's not quite the shape so I need to pump it up a bit more already. So as you can hear, the air is escaping through the hole, it's quite a large hole. If you're just doing like a small pin brick hole, you probably won't have this problem because it, it, it won't be escaping very much. But all we're trying to do is get a covering on the adhesive that's starting to go tacky so that when we put the patch on, it's got something to stick to. So I've applied a bit more glue now. And then 
this is the hard bit. I need to try and make sure that this seal and the patch covers these seams. And there's a bit of just patience. You're going to be working with the glue as it dries. Try not to leave any air bubbles pushing from the middle of the patch out. Like this. And you kind of have to just work with it. It's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy for you, especially if you're going over these seam lines. It never ever is. If your patch was in a really not visible place where you didn't mind if it looked a bit messy, once it's set you could go around the edges with some adhesive and sort of smear it in but it will yellow it will go horrible it'll look really ugly so if it's in a place where you don't really mind it looking so ugly that isn't going to be the end of the world but if it's like this and it's on a part of the rib you can see it, you know you're not going to want that so one thing i forgot to mention at the start is that you should have been wearing gloves when you're using the glue so as soon as i got to the point where i knew i had to sort of touch the patch and work around it when i got my gloves on these are just disposable latex gloves anything you've got will work fine just anything to keep the glue off you Obviously it's toxic, but also it's just obviously really sticky. Once it's on your hand, it's really hard to get off, but wear gloves. Anyway, so we're at the point now where we've got the patch on and it's starting to sort of cure and it's starting to set. And so what you need to do is you just need to keep going round with a pair of gloves, just um, pushing down the edges, because where, where you've got such a different curvatures on, on here, the patch is just going to keep pulling away, so you're just going to have to keep working it and keeping it on there. And it's, it's quite a time consuming laborious thing but if you don't that it will peel away and it will it will just be a mess and one thing you can do to help with doing this is get some something like acetone any kind of like solvent cleaner once it started to set you're not trying to wash the glue off but if you sort of smear it over it with a, with a cloth or something you can then your gloves won't stick to it so you can then work it round don't put so much on there but any of the acetone or, or what you're using can seep down between the glue, between the where, the, where you're trying to stick, because uh, then it won't stick. But you, just over the top, just just so you can do this kind of thing, just so you can rub on it and just keep keep applying pressure. And as you can see, the air has escaped a bit from the ribs, so it's got, you know, I, I can't push and it's a hard, but I don't want there to be so much pressure from the air pushing through, so that's fine. As long as I can still get like this, so I can get my fingers round and keep this edge sticking and, and, and you know, well adhered to it there. So I've been working at this for sort of sort of four minutes, five minutes now. And one thing that people always wonder is when do I need to stop? How do I know when the glue is set enough that I can just leave it be? And one way you can tell that is if you look at the leftover glue in your pot, if that is substantially dried, in that it's not just this is still quite goopy, like I can still use this, so therefore it can't be dried enough because it's exactly the same. It doesn't dry through air, this dries from the harder with a chemical reaction. So the glue inside the, in here, even if it looks like it's all dried around the edges, is not set. It's as simple as that. So you just need to keep working until you know that the glue in your pot is set as well, and then you know you can leave it be. If you just leave it, you, it will peel away in places. So just keep working at it. It might take five, 10 minutes, depending on how much hardener you put in there. And then once it's hardened to the point where you can leave it, I recommend leaving it for about 24 hours before fully inflating it. Don't give it just an hour or two. It probably will be hard enough, but if you want this thing to last, you're going to have to see. You want to know that it was fully set before you put any pressure on it. So we'll do this, and then we'll leave. Once we get to the point where I know that it's not going to peel away at the edges, I'll leave it overnight, and I'll come back tomorrow, and I'll fully inflate it and see if we've got any leaks.